So we live in a world of censorship. Uh, the world's not as censored as it maybe used to be, but it's still pretty bad when it comes down to the concept of censorship. And the reality is, is that when you kind of peel the layers back, like, are we really living in a world? Uh, that's a really loud FedEx truck. <laughs> Are we really li living in a world um, where uh, censorship is less than it was? I mean, I guess and no. Like, obviously, you're allowed to say whatever you want. Um, and technically speaking, you shouldn't be censored. That doesn't. That being said, there have obviously been a lot of high-profile individuals who have been deplatformed for saying whatever they want. There's always consequences to every action, every utterance of, of uh, wrong think, so to speak. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, you are allowed to say it, and it's not like you go to prison for saying it. Um, that being said, there's a lot of people, though, that have their livelihoods banking on their ability to talk so places like this very platform that i am posting this video to have taken the liberty to not necessarily de-platform people but control the narrative to control the words that you say and that's i mean that's more like uh, some form of dictatorial control more than anything but that in and of itself is censorship because i mean if you can if you're not technically supposed to be able to say the, it's not so much that you can't say the things certain things it's that whether or not you get promoted uh for saying those things is the question and i think that that's just unfair we need dissenting voices no matter how repugnant the voices may be um every single person has a voice and that's an unpopular opinion but everybody has a voice even if that voice is coming from the mouth of somebody who's utterly unintelligent and there's a lot of people like that i mean some of you probably think that i'm like that i hope that i'm not like that but you know i'm just saying <laughs> but like for me personally um I am very much, I mean, it's not going to surprise you, I'm very much anti-censorship in every capacity. That being said, you know, there should be some safeguards in place to ensure that you don't see something you don't want to see, you know what I mean? But if you want to see that thing, you should be able to see that thing, whatever that thing may be. Nothing should be off the table everything should be free to see, free to exchange. Uh, you know, we, we, there's murky waters that can be explored there, right? I'm not going to get into those murky waters. But it's just like, at the end of the day, though, nobody should be made to not be able to say things, and you should be able to see things the way that they are meant to be seen. You know, uh, trying to hold back or peel back the layers to make something less than what it is, is uh, horrible uh, to the world of, of art, to the world of, of entertainment, to the world of just thought. You should be allowed to say whatever you want to say or express yourself in the way that you want to express yourself without fear of being censored. And in some ways, it's actually worse than it was back then. Because if you're not allowed to say it in the first place, then, you know, like, <laughs> are you really getting anything? Like, is there really any sort of deference of, of, of opinion whatsoever, you know, because if there's no differences of opinion to start with, I mean, that's like fascist. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know. I don't really know what the term may be. I mean, fascist, communist, fascism. I don't, I don't know. I just made up a word. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, I'm, I'm very much 100% against any form of censorship. And I believe that if you want to control the censor, so to speak, then you need to put certain guards in place to allow the user to control those guards. Because if it's just applied to everybody, the same level of censorship, then you're not... It's just like, what's... What do we get out of this? If you limit something, if you limit the production of something due to censorship, you're not letting it live up to its full potential. And I want to see things live up to its full potential. So stop fucking censoring me. You know, stop holding back from what you can give. Just because something might be quote-unquote horrible doesn't mean that it's actually that horrible. It's horrible to a lot of people, but maybe it's not horrible to everybody. So, that's why you put in safeguards. That's why you put in... Okay, so, the internet, for example, has had control over what you see. You can filter in... You can filter in the good, you can filter in the bad. And that is controlled by you, the user, through your search engine optimization. Now, when you set up your SEO, you can keep explicit material, or you can make sure that there is none, none, none of that. And, you know, you can, like, you can, like, <laughs> have control over your own existence, and your own world, as it were. I'm getting close to the, the busy road, and there's like some other people in front of me. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, it, it's just, I think that a personal experience, personal control over your own experience should be, you know, in place. I shouldn't have to adhere to the experiences of a few people when I want to experience something myself in my own way. Does that make any sense? I hope it does. Um, but yeah, it's just like... <laughs> let me deal with what I want to deal with on my own terms. Not on your terms. My terms. And um, I honestly think that things would be better for it. Also, I just feel like uh, <laughs> to extend upon that a little bit, Everything is connected to the internet these days. Everything. There was a time where you could get software that wasn't connected to the internet. Software that you could run on your own personal computer, right? That didn't require internet connection. Or at the very least, had a, maybe, maybe it had an internet connection, but you know, it didn't have like ultimate power over your existence. Um, <laughs> let's just say that everything is connected to the internet now, and if everything is connected to the internet, you, you're basically, you're under the control of whoever is in control of that software. Like, I should be able to purchase software, put it on my computer, and have full autonomy over whatever that software is without there being any sort of internet oversight from whatever the company is that created the software. They created the software, but you bought the software with your own money, and you should be able to then use the software whatever way you see fit. It's kind of the reason why we've had mods in video games. <laughs> and I mean, obviously, there's more to it than just simply, you know... <laughs> there being a lack of an internet connection, like, that's got very little to do with it, but the reality is, is still, you probably wouldn't have had modding if companies cracked down on that from the beginning, you know? Obviously, companies allowed it to happen, 
and a lot of them wish they hadn't. But you know what? It happened. So I'm seeing some similar things with AI. You can't crack down on something that barely exists. You have to let it exist first before you crack down on it. And even then, you shouldn't be cracking down on it. Um, I mean, is there some limitations to being against the uh, aspects of censorship? Sure, there's always limits to everything. I personally think that there should be no limits, but I mean, obviously, you've always had network television network uh, network television networks. You've had channels on TV um, that have been created and tailored specifically to a specific audience in a specific way, with you know no S words, no F words, no shit fucks, you know none of that. And I mean that's just the way that that is. That's just what they, what that content is made for. But you can ignore that content and you can move on to different content that is more expressive, more expletive, and more your scene if that's what you're into. So you have choice. You know the question is choice, and that's the, at the end of the day that's what you need. You need to have choices. You know should I? I don't want to be given like the same non-choice. For everything, you know, and if 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 I'm just stuck in one sort of parameter, and that's where I am forever and all time, then this thing is not for me, uh, and that's the end of it, you know. That's the end of it. You, you kill it before you even allow it to grow into something that could be great. Uh, at least that's the way I see it. Um, you can't put limits on something that isn't at a point where it should be limited. It needs to grow. It needs to blossom. And then we could talk about limiting it. But, you know, until that point... Give me choices. Give me options. I don't want to have to adhere to the same rules that a five-year-old adheres to, you know, that a 32-year-old should be able to adhere to. You understand? Like, you think George R. R. Martin reels in his writing when he writes Game of Thrones or, or a Song of Ice and Fire or whatever, you know, you want to call it. No. No. He doesn't. By extension, the TV show didn't really rein itself in that much. As a matter of fact, it even did worse sometimes than the uh, the series itself. And people pretended like, oh my god, this is so fucked up. Get used to it. <laughs> you know? Things are going to be fucked up. Things are going to be not fucked up. But it's all a question of choice. Choose what you want to see, what you want to hear, what you want to read, what you want to watch, what you want to make. Creativity should not be stifled by those who don't understand creativity. That's kind of all I gotta say about that. But ultimately, yeah. No censorship. That's the end of that. Thank you very much.